Hey everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Dark Souls. So, on the last video, showed off some of the PvP, but hey, we're not in An Orlando anymore. We are actually back in the uh, Chaos Daughters bonfire. Actually, what we're gonna do... Unequip Pavel's Ring? Oh, I don't like the idea. I don't like the sound of that. What's our equipment burden like? Oh, it's still under 50%. I put on the Rusted Iron Ring. And this is because we are actually gonna head back out to Blight Town. Go to an area called uh, the Great Hollow and Ash Lake. Oh, accidentally activated that elevator. Oh well. So this is another optional area, and I really like to do this area after An Orlando. Some people do it before, but I think it's really risky. Do I have purging stones? If I don't have purging stones, this could be a bad idea. Prism stones. Alluring skull. Pur okay, three purging stones. That'll hopefully be enough. God forbid things go any worse than, uh, you know, what I could possibly be imagining here. But anyway, I like to do this area after you get the Lord Vessel in, in Orlando because it allows warping and that's going to make getting back from this area a lot easier. So we're going to enter Blighttown Swamp again. I did equip the rusted, rusted Iron Ring and the reason I did that is because it's going to allow us to uh, traverse Blighttown Swamp really easily. I probably have mosses regardless. But this is going to allow us to hopefully not get poisoned or, you know, at least run faster than normal to get to the Great Hollow. And this is a, an optional area that is strongly recommended you go to it. There's kind of some dick enemies in it, including frogs that have breath that curses you. Which is probably a, a big enemy for new players to face. Normally you face it in the depths first, but of course I skipped most of the depths, much to the ch chagrin of a lot of people. Let's see here. You can see uh, I can walk normally, which is really useful. I did end up getting poisoned anyway, though, because I think I took a piss poor route from place to place. And we're just going to use our Lightning Uchi Katana, basically, cut these guys up fairly easily. Once you're poisoned, might as well just stick it out. No point in curing your poison and then just immediately getting poisoned again. Now, I kind of forget the way that we're supposed to be going, but we're going to look for like a big tree branch, essentially. Because the Great Hollow is essentially just a tree. Highly recommended, by the way, that if you're playing the game and you haven't gone to the Great Hollow, go to it, because there's a lot of upgrade materials there. It's a pain in the ass to get around, because you can easily fall at a number of places and the enemies are kind of dicks. But, uh, you know, the payoff is definitely worth it. Chop up these mosquitoes. One other thing worth mentioning, I can sort of see it in the distance now. Some items here we haven't picked up yet. Large souls, those are going to be basically worthless to us. I think those are like a thousand souls. If I'm not worried about losing 250,000, I'm sure as hell not worried about getting one extra thousand. I don't, there it is, okay. So there's the path we want to take. One thing I want to point out, if you're uh, still you know, fairly new to the game, just at Blighttown right now, these guys can be farmed for large Titanite Shards and green Titanite Shards. They're fairly easy to kill, they don't hit that hard, and they have a good drop rate particularly uh, when you have a lot of humanity and the Covetous Gold Serpent Ring, which you can get from Sen's Fortress. So we're going to come up this tree branch. And there's some items in here. I think there's an armor set. I can't remember, though. This is going to be a Plank Shield, which is the, the shield that Manager Mildred uses. And here's an Illusory Wall. Going to make sure this chest isn't a Mimic. Pop it open. Twin Humanities. Cool, because I've been burning through those a little bit. And hey, another Illusory Wall. I'm not going to worry so much about curing my poison because we have a bonfire coming up in like two seconds. So here we have entered the Great Hollow. We'll have a little bit of a drop, which I'll just roll off. Pretty sure it wasn't going to kill me. And here's our bonfire. Excellent. So we'll light this. Rest at it to cure our poison. And we're good. Okay, Great Hollow. Way to traverse this area. I've only been down here once, by the way, so you can cut me some slack if I miss out on a lot of great items. Entirely tree branches, and entirely dickish to get around, essentially. We'll have to make jumps from tree branch to tree branch. Ah, oh, Crystal Lizard, I'm sorry. <laughs> I would love to get to you. I probably should have just shot it with something. I had no idea that it was here, to be honest with you. Uh, so there's a lot of, like, secret areas... <clears throat> in the Great Hollow that you can get to by like rolling off or, or jumping down. I'm gonna mostly stick to the tr the traditional route here because I don't want to fall to my death and potentially lose a lot of humanity. What are we dealing with in here? This looks like a, a, an illusory wall section. I'm just throwing that out there. 
Nope, okay. It's also worth noting the first time I went through the Great Hollow was on uh, my first character when I had no fucking idea what I was doing in this game at all. So we're just gonna keep walking cautiously because we could quite easily fall off. You can see there's an item down. Oh god! Almost fell off the goddamn rounded tree branches. Titanite chunk. Yeah, we can find a lot of Titanite chunks here. Uh, a lot of... I think there might even be a slab here somewhere, which is pretty valuable. Just gonna take it easy. We haven't come across any enemies yet, but I assure you that we will. Of course, these, like, unbreakable tree branches that we can't walk through. Like this, I could so easily fall here. Oh, never mind. I uh, actually just can't get past it. I'm kind of not a big fan of the Great Hollow, as you might expect. Is there a way down there? Uh, because of the fact that it's so annoying to get around, let's roll off here. Okay, here's the Cursed Frogs. Fuck these guys. First, let's pick up this. Large soul of a nameless soldier. Again, pretty much worthless for us. Now, we're going to really try to avoid getting hit by all of these guys' fucking curse attacks. Don't breathe on me, bro. Luckily, they die fairly easily. They might even drop Purging Stones. Eye of Death! Oh, I didn't know they dropped Eyes of Death. That's related to another covenant known as the Gra Gravelord Servants, which I totally fucked up getting to when we were in the Catacombs and Tomb of the Giants. Oh, well. So I'll kill these guys. They're actually called Basilisks. One of the cool things about Dark Souls is that if you see uh, something like this, that is another player who is playing the game and died by getting cursed. Fuck you! That's quickly becoming my catchphrase. I gotta be careful about that. Um, so yeah, this is kind of a neat ambient thing. I think I explained that already when we fought Seath, because the same thing happens there. So those basilisks are going to be our main pain in the ass here. This again looks like an illusory wall. Again, I am not the Brady Games strategy guide to Dark Souls. I don't know where all the illusory walls are. I don't know where all the items are. Cut me some slack here. I'm definitely missing a lot here. But that's alright. Feels alright to me anyway, let's put it that way. I always get confused here. Like, have I already been around here? Where do I go from here? Oh, there's a ladder! Awesome! Alright, I know exactly where we are now. I've missed, like, basically every item in there. But I'm still alive. So, I'm not sweating it. There's another ladder. So, we're getting down to the base of the Great Hollow. Which is nifty. This is kind of a neat area in terms of, like, the world of Dark Souls. It really gives you a sense of how things are going. Like, this is, this is the tree that is kind of holding up the rest of the world. This guy, I believe there's one more basilisk up here. Again, another reason why you might want to do this a little bit later in the game is so you have purging stones just in case you get cursed, and so you can kill these guys more easily. My resistances are pretty high right now because I have a lot of uh, humanity. Humanity actually increases your resistances, so you don't get cursed as easily. And having seven humanity is a lot. Most people are not walking around with that. But, you know, I like to live dangerously. Come down here, there's another Basilisk. Normally, I like one of those curse breaths. Depending on your, your resistances can get to you. Yeah. Oh, there's two more, okay. What is going on here? It's some kind of like two-headed abomination because of the, the clipping in the game. There's gotta be one more, right? I think I see the pair of big bulging eyes over there. Oh, uh, this is deceased. There's two more, though. Alright, so these guys aren't as bad as I thought because I can basically just walk in and one-shot them. You can see that like, you still gotta be on the ball because those, uh, the breath attack, if it hits you full on, does fill up maybe 25% of my curse meter. Okay, just gonna fall to my death then. Sorry about that. That's why I fucking hate the Great Hollow. Consistently. <laughs> okay. That kind of sucks, but we can make our way back down there fairly quickly now that I know which direction to take. Uh, we are no longer human, which sucks, and I really don't want to fall again. I'm not so much worried about the like 160,000 souls. I can farm those back so easily. I know people get bent out of shape when I talk about like losing souls like it's nothing. It is nothing. Once, you, once you've created the character you want to create, what are you going to use those souls for? There's a crystal lizard! Oh, god damn you, crystal lizard! I couldn't get to you fast enough. I think I'm taking a different path this time. There's like three crystal lizards there! I can't get to you! I want, I want you so bad, crystal lizards. So I gotta be a little bit more careful this time because I might actually... 
Oh, come on, that didn't hit him. Uh, my resistances are not as high now. So I can be cursed much more easily. But that's okay. Oh, I actually did manage to get one down here. Eye of Death, okay, again, related to the Gravelord Covenant. I'm not going to talk about the Gravelord Covenant because I don't know much about them. So I'll leave that to someone who is a little bit more knowledgeable about the game, shall we say. So we're already in the Basilisk area. I will probably carry this video as far as Ash Lake. It might be a little bit shorter than the average video, but that's okay. Crystal Li I Fuck it, I'm going for you. Oh, god damn you, Crystal Lizard! <laughs> so you can see this is a good uh, area. Because Crystal Lizards always drop, I believe, chunks. Chunks and shards? Mostly chunks, though. So definitely a good place to farm for, uh, well, I mean, you can't farm crystal lizards, but a good place to, ah, down the ladder, not backstep. Backstep off the edge and fucking die. It's the most likely situation that's going to happen right there. Um, <clears throat> definitely a good place to get upgrade materials. It's the primary reason I think people go to the Great Hollow, because, again, not a, a story-based area. Wow, that was a terrible jump for this guy. I kind of want to see how much the breath attack takes out of my curse. You know, knowledge is power. But I don't want to... Oh, fuck me. I'm going to have to fight this guy down here now. With, like, the five other basilisks. Yeah, cool, man. Just hang out right by the ladder. Um, where I have no means with which to get around you. Alright, there you can see. Look at how small my curse meter is now compared to where it was before. There is our blood stain. That's going to give us humanity, which should raise our curse meter. But I'm not sure if you actually have to be human to get the benefits of having a larger curse meter. Let's just walk into this a little bit and see. Maybe that's a bad idea. Oh yeah, we do have a big curse meter now. Fine, fine, fine. We're gonna be alright. Should back up a little bit though. Still better safe than sorry. Now, if these guys would stop jumping, we would have a good time here. Try not to fall down the hole. Probably the best advice I could give you here. Now, there should be like another ladder going down. That I can hop onto. Oh, there's another basilisk. I didn't know that. Jumps right on top of me. Did like two damage. Oh, come on. I can't do the thrust attack through there. Okay. Try this again. Large soul of a nameless soldier. Fantastic. Come down through here. Now, we should have a new enemy to fight. Um, I don't know what to call them. And I don't want to be offensive. But I'm going to call them mushroom people. Because they look like mushrooms. Anthropomorph anthropomorphic mushrooms, anyway. Probably the first time I've ever used that word in a conversation that wasn't about a movie with talking animals. So you can see we're getting down into the mushroom zone here. Could be a little bit more risky and start jumping to get on those mushroom caps, which would allow me to probably pick up some of the items dangling down there, but I'm, again, playing it pretty safe. Now, the mushroom guys, pretty easy to kill. Except for the fact but there's two types. There's like little mushy and big mushy. This is another little mushy here. They hit kind of hard, I will say. I'm just gonna chop them up like that. Get back on the branch and take it down. How do we get, what's the safest way to get down here? I fucking hate the Great Hollow, man. Now what do I do? Can I, I, I can't make any of these jumps and survive, can I? Barely. Okay, we'll get back on this mushroom staircase. There's big mushies around. Okay. You know, we could probably kill them with where we are right now in the game. But uh, I'm just going to run past them because I've never fought them. And they scared the shit out of me because one time they just one-shotted me. Now, as we go through this fog gate... <clears throat> see, we are being followed by these mushroom men. <clears throat> no, they went away. Excellent. Entering an area called Ash Lake, kind of a cool area atmospherically in the game. You can see there's that bonfire over there, that's going to be really useful for us. Now Ash Lake is essentially the bottom of the world, which is neat, because if you look you can see like these trees are holding the rest of the world up, which is really cool. I'm not sure you can see anything else from Ash Lake. Again, I've only been down here once, so this is all kind of news to me. And this area is essentially barren of anything, except for that Hydra right there. And also some more clam enemies that we can farm for Twinkling Titanite. Twinkling Titanite, but I don't really want to do that. <clears throat> you know what, we might as well fight the Hydra in this video because it's only been 14 minutes and I'm really self-conscious about the, the product that I quote-unquote provide. 
rest of this bonfire, and then we'll go fight the Hydra. We're going to keep our rusted iron ring on because that is going to allow us to fight on relatively uneven footing, which is going to be like in the water here. Now the Hydra has two attacks. One of them is like a water gush attack. And this is a really annoying attack because it usually will hit us through our shield. You'll probably see it right here. Yeah, luckily it didn't hit us there, but that one hurts like a bitch. And then it also, when you get close to it, too close for it to gush, it has this like, yeah, thrust attack right there. It takes off almost all your stability, even with me at this relatively high level. But this boss is honestly one of the easier ones in the game, particularly if you fight it at the level that I fought it right now. The main thing you want to worry about is just avoiding getting hit into like the deep water, because that'll kill you instantly. Kind of a pain in the ass to fight because you can't just like tank him and then go to town on him with a combo of sorts. You gotta it's better actually to not lock on for the most part and time your shots. Or aim your shots manually, I should say. There's other ways to fight this Hydra. This is the way I prefer to do it. Dark Souls is very much a have it your way type of game. Get rid of this. Uh, I am not doing so well with my attacking so far, but you can see that like for defense, this is gonna be a very easy fight. We don't get a lot. I think we get like 10,000 souls for beating him, so this is certainly not one of the more, you know, renowned bosses in the game. Yeah, you can see we cut off the heads of the Hydra. This is going to make it easier and easier to kill it. In fact, once you get a couple of heads down, pretty much a no-brainer. Got a lucky attack off there. That did a lot of damage. Uh, when I first fought this guy, I still had the Drake Sword, and it took me like an hour to fight this guy. It was an intense battle. So he's going to back up. Usually when he backs up, that means he's trying to do his... Uh, Gush attack again, which I don't want to let happen. Want to get closer, goad him into coming close, and then doing that thrusting attack. Thrusting and gushing, a pretty sexual episode of Dark Souls here. The heads go back so fast, I can't quite get to them. Alright, come back, come back, come back. Don't go out there and hit me with your water attack. Psychology of this boss is quite easy. So the thrust attack. Come on, hit it. Ah, oh, god damn it. I'm wary to get too much closer. You can sort of see where the, the shore ends and the water begins, and I don't want to be a part of that, that divide. Look at how fast the goes away. Oh, I got it. Okay, I cut off at least one head there. Maybe two, actually. Pretty cool design on this boss. There's another uh, similar boss in Darkroot Basin. We probably won't fight him because it's exactly the same Hydra. I don't want to show that fight twice. He's also very easy. I'm not sure if one is particularly easier than the other. I, even, I might have gotten him once there. Yeah, let's just hold on to this. That'll do it. That should take another hit off. And what has he got? Like 40% of his health left? The boss is almost done. So with the next video, once we defeat this guy, uh, we will start at Ashley. Because there's a very, very little more to show off. But it's important, and again, it's kind of atmospheric. It adds to the, the feel of the game. But by and large, this area is pretty barren, which I think is an intentional design choice. Although a lot of people do express the desire to have, you know, a little bit more action in Ash Lake. It kind of seems like a semi-useless area, which is not totally false. I, I can't really argue with that, but it's nice. It, it rounds out the game a little bit. So let's get this guy to do his thrust attack again. We'll try to hit some of these heads. There's only like two left. Three left. But he retracts them so fast. I wonder if he can actually die before all the heads are gone. It's looking like that might be the way that this goes. Trust me, this boss fight is not nearly as relaxing when you do it with the Drake Sword. At like level 10. <laughs> I don't know, it was probably like level 30 by that point, because I just spent all my souls on leveling. But anyway, you know. Let's see what we got going on here. That thrust attack almost hit me. I can't see what's going on here. I have three heads left. Each one of them probably has one hit left. It's hard, it's all about positioning. I can't seem to get in a good position to take these guys out. Did that hit it? Yes, it did, okay. Looks like one more hit for each of these heads. Run backwards, try to slash this one. There's three heads left? Come on. Like the guy with the lightning Uchi Katana plus two is gonna hold the door for the Hydra with only one head left. 
What is that roll? What, did I not do any damage there? That's embarrassing. I kind of feel bad for this guy. Maybe I should just spam him with Pyromancy. That might kill him more quickly. Let's take our Great Chaos Fire by that. We'll at least try. Gush attack. Sorry, that's not going to do very much for you, Mr. Hydra. And uh, thrust attack, please. I want to hit you with my Great Chaos Fireball. There we go. That's a perfect opportunity. God damn it! <laughs> Should have taken my sword out. Should just shoot him with arrows at this point. Alright. This looks like a gush attack waiting to happen. This boss fight, honestly, I hate to say it, is kind of boring. But it's worth showing. Dark Souls. There's a lot of bosses that are very exciting. This is not necessarily one of them. One more hit, I'm guessing, and this Hydra's gonna go down. Just get him to do a thrust. Did it do him? I can't tell because there's so few heads left. Okay, one more attack. I can't even see his remaining health. This should do it. I believe so. Yes. Okay, good. How many souls do you got for me? Dragon scale, 10,000 souls. Again, not very much. There's an item over here we can pick up. What do we got here? Careful not to step in the deep water. We use those dragon scale to upgrade our upgrade our Drake sword, of course. And another dragon scale, that's cool. Anyway, I'm gonna end the video here. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time when I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do. Kind of running out of options. I guess we do have the painted world still. That's a big one that people probably want to see. And other than that, we're basically, we got Kiln of the First Flame and the final boss fight. So we're getting pretty close to the end of the Let's Play now. I know, you know, I like to kind of stay in denial and be like, still a lot of videos left. Not a lot of videos left at this point, to be 100% honest with you. Maybe three or four? Hard to say. But always more PvP. I've got a, a standard PvP character that I would love to do more of. Anyway, as always, thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.